You're traveling through another dimension. A dimension not only of sight and sound, but of mind. Your next stop... <clears throat> Good evening, everyone. Welcome to A Word of the Lord. James over here with you, and so glad that you are with us tonight. We are ready for another study from God's Word. I'm going to be discussing a, uh, I hope, answering a question that uh, was asked to us last week. I don't, I'm not really sure about what the caller said, but we're going to uh, answer it as if this is what the caller was referring to. But before we get into this, we want to give us our kind of information. You can reach me at a word from the Lord at gmail.com, uh, 276-340-2653 is how you can reach me. And so we uh, want you to know we uh, are looking forward to hearing from you and hope that you will take us up on our uh, invitation to study God's Word with us. We meet at 250 the Boulevard <clears throat> on Sundays at 9 a.m. and 10 a.m. 10 a.m. for worship, 9 o'clock for Bible study. Bible study uh, Thursday nights at 7 o'clock. And of course, then we're here on uh, Thursday nights at 9 o'clock as well. So we hope that you will do that very thing. Uh, Martinsville, 823 Starting Avenue, Danville, 120 American Legion. These are all places where you can go to study God's Word. We hope that you will do that, friends. Come out and visit, investigate the Church of Christ and uh, we'll, we'll give you what the Bible is saying. We'll give you a word from the Lord, no doubt about that. And so we hope that you will um, come out and visit with us and let us uh, get to know you a little better. Um, tonight, we want to start off with this, uh, this statement here. One of the things that I think a lot of people are confused about is the work of the Holy Spirit. For example, just to show you how people are confused about the Holy Spirit and the job of the Holy Spirit, I actually heard Blake say that he had a Bible study with a lady that was asking questions about the Holy Spirit. And so we want you to know that, you know, the Bible does have an answer. The question is, do we get out of the Bible what God intended for us to get out of it? And you can tell that there's a lot of confusion because of what people say. For example, the, the uh, individuals that say once saved, always saved, they're going to misuse uh, the Holy Spirit and quote verses like Ephesians 4 and verse 30. Grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby ye are sealed unto the day of redemption. Uh, the Pentecostals will come along and they'll say, well, yeah, the Holy Spirit gives them miraculous powers. For 1 John uh, 2 and verse 20 says, but now you have an unction uh, from the Holy Spirit. And therefore you have all these miraculous gifts. Well, listen to what the caller said uh, last week. And I'm not really sure if the caller was talking about being sealed by the Spirit or, or what have you, but I want you to listen to this, and then we'll just go from there. All right, we've got one call. We've got 30 seconds. Go. You're on word from the Lord. Go. you got 30 seconds. Yeah. yeah Let me start over. All right, we've got one call. you got 30 seconds. Go. That's fine. You're on word from the Lord. Go. you got 30 seconds. Yes. Yes, it was it, um... Yes, well, um... What did Acts 1-8 come from? Acts 1-8? Acts 1-8 came in, and uh, yes, sir, I received the power after the Holy Ghost have come upon you. He was talking to the apostles. Acts... He was talking to the apostles there. I, I'm not denying that, but that's not today. That's not today, but the Holy Ghost is this, the Holy Ghost is the keeper. Now, what verse are you talking about now? The Holy Verse is a Holy Ghost is a keeper. What, yes, what? The Holy Ghost is a keeper. And, and, you got to give me Holy a scripture. It's is, is a keeper. I mean, we got the Holy Ghost, we got the Holy Spirit in there too, but they 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 they, they still occur different burns. Okay. Uh, you want to stay on the line? I'll talk I'm to you. Try to get away from the Holy Ghost, but that don't work. You can't turn that out the face. Well, the Holy Spirit does not work today like he did in the first century. We have the inspired Word of God. Whatever the Word does, whatever you say the Spirit does, the Word can do. If you want to stay on the line, I'll talk to you, but I got to go. You want to stay on the line? Okay. All right. 
What, what? The Holy Ghost is a keeper. And you got to give me a scripture. It's is a keeper. I mean, we got the Holy Ghost, we got the Holy Spirit in there too, but they they they, they, they still carry different burns. Oh, yes, what? The Holy Ghost is a keeper. And you got to give me a scripture. It's is a keeper. I mean, we got the Holy Ghost, we got the Holy Spirit in there too, but they they they, they, they still carry different burns. All right, the Holy Ghost is a keeper, is what the caller said. And I asked for the verse, but we never got a verse. And see, friends, that's why we say on these programs, if you're going to call in and you're going to tell us something about the Bible, we, we're going to say, what does the Bible say? And we, want to, we expect you to give us a word from the Lord. We want you to give us Bible. Don't just say, well, the Holy Ghost is this, Holy Ghost is that, and not give a scripture. We want a verse because we're going to give you a verse. Now, I said, you know, where's the verse? And they never gave the verse. And then the caller said, well, the Holy Ghost and the Holy Spirit, as if the Holy Ghost and the Holy Spirit are different. Well, the Holy Ghost is the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the Holy Ghost. They're, they're one and the same. So <clears throat> that, that tells me, that told me right there that the caller really didn't understand what the Bible is saying about the Holy Spirit. Now, what did the caller mean by saying, well, the Holy Ghost is a keeper? Is that saying like that uh, that the Holy Ghost is is uh, someone that w is worth keeping? You know, like you might say, if a, if a man finds a a pretty wife that can cook and things like that, so oh, well, she's a keeper. Is that is that what we're talking about? Or are we talking about the Holy Ghost is someone who does the keeping? Well, I have a feeling they're talking about the Holy Spirit is someone who does the keeping, because notice what the Bible says, Ephesians one verses thirteen and fourteen. Paul said, in whom also you trusted <clears throat> after ye heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also after that ye believed, ye were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise, which is the earnest of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession unto the praise of his glory. Now, it may be that they're talking about this uh, uh, the Holy Spirit keeping in the sense of the Holy Spirit was sealed or you're sealed by the Holy Spirit. Now, what does the Bible mean by that? That's what we're getting into. How is the Holy Spirit a keeper? What does it mean to be sealed by the Holy Spirit? Or, or really what, what is the, the work of the Holy Spirit uh, uh, at all? Well, let's notice some words here that we're going to be looking at. Here's some definition of some words. The word seal, which two of the verses we read, <clears throat> indicates you're sealed by the Spirit. A seal is something that's placed upon books, um, or it could be a signet ring, something that is used to make that, that seal, or the impression by a seal. All right, so if you, if you close up a book, you put a seal on it, or you put an, impre uh, an indention or an impression upon something to show that it had been sealed. If you go into the notary of uh, uh, if you go down to a notary of public, what you'll find is they will they will seal so they'll put a stamp on it. And that will show, that will give you an impression of their of their particular seal so that it can be authenticated. That document can be authenticated. A seal is that which anything that by which anything is confirmed. So a seal could be the seal that's placed upon a book that's made by a signet ring and left an impression upon something, and therefore that is a seal or it is sealed. It means to be proved authentic or authenticated as by a seal. Some books, especially I know um, like in Catholic doctrines, if you want to know if something is uh, authentic or if it is ordained by the Catholic Church, you can look inside some of these books and there'll be, there'll be a fermata. There'll be a seal, some kind of indication that this is approved by the, by the Catholic Church or so forth. All right? Well, that's what we're talking about here. A seal. That is what <clears throat> the word means. Okay? Now, another word that we looked at that we heard in, in 1 John 2 verse 20 is an unction. You have an unction of the, from the Holy Spirit. Well, this is an um, uh, and an an uh, an ungent or a smearing, 
that is a special endowment of the Holy Spirit. And it's translated, don't you notice it? It's translated anointing, and it's also translated uh, uh, unction. So when, when John said in 1 John 2, verse 20, you have an unction of the Spirit, you have an anointing of the Spirit. Now that's important that you remember these, these verses. You remember these words, because we're going to see them again, all right? Now notice this. Here's, our, here's where we're going here. Now, if we were sealed, or if we're kept, or we're uh, given an unction, whatever, the seal must be visible in some way or fashion. The, otherwise, how do you know you're sealed? You know, if you, uh, you go to the store and you buy some food, and the label says, don't use if seal is broken. Well, how do you know if it's broken or not? Unless you can actually see the seal, right? You need to see the plastic around the top or uh, you see the, the little foil uh, cover on the inside or on the lid. Something it has to indicate that it has been sealed. You have to see the seal to know if you, it has been sealed or if the seal has been broken. Well, look what Paul says. In Romans 4 verse 11, he says, And he received the sign of circumcision. He's talking about Abraham. He received a sign of circumcision, a seal of the righteousness of the faith, which he had yet being uncircumcised, that he might be the father of all them that believe, though they be not circumcised, that righteousness, not be, that righteousness might be imputed unto them also. Now, with the seal or the sign of circumcision, how, how's, how's he going to be, how is a circumcision a sign or seal? Well, if you just know what circumcision is, you pretty much know what the, what the sign is, right? You can tell if someone has been circumcised or not. Later on, you're going to come across Moses in the book of Exodus. He didn't circumcise his children. God's going to kill him. So it was obvious that, that uh, what the sign or the seal was, uh, the sign was, and that was circumcision, to the point that Zephora said to uh, uh, Moses, you know, your bloody husband, um, and so she took and circumcised her sons. Well, how did she know that uh, that they weren't circumcised? How could she tell what the what the seal was? Well, obviously there hadn't been a seal given. He weren't circumcised. So my point is, a seal is something that is visible, something something you can see. All right. Now, Jesus was sealed of God. In John chapter six, verse twenty-seven. Look at this. Jesus said, Labor not for the meat which perisheth, <clears throat> but for that meat which endureth unto everlasting life, which the Son of Man hath given unto you. For him hath God the Father sealed. Now, how was Jesus sealed? How was a seal placed upon Jesus? How, what was the sign that was placed upon Jesus? I mean, how did they know that Jesus had been sealed? Just taking his word for it? Or was there some evidence, something that was visible that could be seen that Jesus had been sealed? Well, let's look at another verse here. Let's answer the how. Let's go back to John chapter 1 and verse 26. John 1 and verse 26, <coughs> and I'm going to take the time to get my Bible program going here because I know I'm going to need it in just a minute. But in John chapter 1, beginning in verse 26, John answered them, this is John the baptizer, saying, I baptize with water, but there standeth one among you whom ye know not. He it is who coming after me is preferred before me, whose shoes latch it, I am not worthy to unloose. These things were done in Beth Araba, beyond Jordan, where John was baptizing. Now let's look again. Let's keep going. The next day, I'm going, to, I'm going to put this up here because uh, it's going to be very difficult to see here. All right. Verse 29, John 1, 29. The next day John said Jesus coming unto him <clears throat> and saith, Behold, the Lamb of God which taketh away the sin of the world. How did John know this was the Lamb of God? He said, that's my cousin. I, just, I think I'm going to make him the son of God. How, how did he know this was the lamb, the lamb of God? 
He says, This is he of whom I said, After me cometh a man which is preferred before me, for he was before me. And I knew him not. He said, I didn't know who he was. I didn't know that he was the Lamb of God. Well, how did you know, John? He said, I knew him not, but that he should be made manifest to Israel. Therefore am I come baptizing with water. And John bare record saying, I saw the Spirit descending from heaven like a dove, and it abode upon him. Now that'd be a, that'd be a sign. That'd be something special. That would be something visible that everybody could see. Hey, this is a, a, a sign, a signet, and a, a seal on Jesus that is different from everybody else. Now notice this. And he says, I knew him not, but that he that sent me to baptize with water, now that's God, the Father, sent John to baptize, he said, the same said unto me, that's the Father, said to John, Upon whom thou shalt see the Spirit descending and remaining, on him the same is he which baptizeth with the Holy Ghost. Now notice this, verse, verse 34. And I saw and bear record that this is the Son of God. How did he know? How did he know the Son of God? Because he saw... What God said to look for. God said, here's the sign. Here's the sign. You know, it's old, that's an old song or comedian, isn't it? Here's your sign. You know, some people read through the Bible and they don't see signs that are clear as this. John saw the, uh, the Spirit like a dove descending upon Jesus. And then he remembered, God said, when I see the Spirit descending upon someone and remaining, he's the Lamb of God. That was the sign. That was the visible token that said this is the Son of God. And he said, so I bear record that this is the Son of God. I know that he has been sealed because I saw the sign that God, the Father, said to look for. All right, so Jesus was sealed. It was, it was something that was clearly seen. Now look at this. In Acts 10 and verse 38, <clears throat> Acts 10 to verse 30, listen to what it said about Jesus. He says how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil for God was with him. Now, how did God anoint Jesus? Did he pour some oil on him? No. Sure didn't. What was the unction? There's the word, anointed. How did he anoint Jesus with the Holy Spirit? We just read it. The Spirit came upon Jesus and descended upon him and remained. He was endued with power by the Holy Spirit, and therefore he went about doing all these things, healing people, all the oppressed of the devil, because God was with him. How do you know that God was with Jesus? Why was Jesus not... Uh, just like anybody else. I mean, how, what set him apart? The fact that he was doing things that could only be done with God on his side. And you know what? That sounds very much like what the Bible says. You know, Jesus made this statement in Luke 4 and verse 18. Luke 4 and verse 18. Jesus picks up the scroll. He goes to the temple, as his custom was, and, he, and he's reading from Isaiah. And he says in Luke 4, verse 18, he's reading Isaiah, and he says, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. And he hath sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised. God anointed Jesus. God anointed Jesus? There was an unction upon Jesus? There was a pouring out of the Spirit? That's exactly right. When did it happen? When Jesus was baptized and the Holy Spirit descended like in the form of a dove, rested upon Jesus and remained, that, and remained. that's what gave John the baptizer the indication that this is the Son of God. That's how he knew. That was the seal. That was a sign. This is the Son of God. 
And then Jesus stands up and says, well, I was anointed. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he hath anointed me. He hath anointed me. So the sign of God's approval was the Holy Spirit being upon Jesus and then Jesus doing things that only someone could do if God was with him, if God was on their side. That's how you knew if someone was from God or not. Look at this in Acts 2 verse 22 when Peter and the other 11 are standing on the day of Pentecost and they're preaching to the multitudes about Jesus the Messiah, the Son of God that, that the crowd has crucified. How do they prove that he is the Son of God? How do they prove that he was the Christ? How do they prove that he was the anointed one? And that's what Christ means. Anointed one. How did they prove that? He said, ye men of Israel, hear these words. Jesus of Nazareth, a man approved of God among you by miracles and wonders and signs which God did by him in the midst of you as ye yourselves also know. The things that Jesus did, miracles that he did were evidence it was a sign that he had been sealed, that he had been <clears throat> verified, authenticated as the Son of God. John 7, 31, look what the people said. Many people, uh, many of the people believed on Jesus. They believed on him and said, when Christ cometh, when the anointed one cometh, comes, uh, will he do more miracles than these which this man had done? They knew the Messiah was going to have some sort of power from God to do things that no one else could do. You see, friend, you see how the sign, the seal of the Holy Spirit, the unction of the Holy Spirit is actually connecting to miraculous powers, miraculous gifts, and how that verified or signified, sealed, if you will, that Jesus was the Son of God, who uh, was who uh, he claimed to be, Sealed by miracles. This is what we're talking about. Individuals were sealed by miracles just as Christ was sealed by the power of the Holy Spirit and then went about doing good, healing the sick and those oppressed of the devil. Notice this. If you were sealed, if a person was sealed by miracles, they were sealed by the miracles that were done. They were the proof. See, it was something visible, something that could be seen. Remember, that's the definition of a seal. Now, John 5, verse 36, Jesus <coughs> says that he's talking about people said, you know, uh, who are you? He's given evidence of who he is. He says, I have a greater witness than that of John. Now, John was the one that came along and said, look, I saw the Spirit descending upon him and remaining. And God told me that when I saw that, that was the Son of God. Now, Jesus said, you know what? I've got a better witness than that. Now, that, that's a pretty good witness. John the baptizer that uh, m many of the people in Israel thought were considered to be a prophet. You know, Herod uh, feared the people because they, they considered John to be a prophet. And Jesus said, you know what? I, I've got a better witness than that even. Notice what he says. He says, the works which the Father hath given me to finish, the same works that I do bear witness of me that the Father hath sent me. The things that I'm doing, what? Healing the sick, ca casting out devils, those that are oppressed of the devil, uh, healing the blind. Th those are the things that bear witness to me that, you know what? The Father's on my side. That God is on my side. The works that the Father has given me to finish, those bear witness of me. Weren't they evidence? Weren't they visible signs that people could see? All right? Now, Nicodemus in John 3, again, he goes to the fact that he saw miracles being done, and he says these are evidence that Jesus is, uh, is with God or God is with Jesus. He said no man can do these miracles except God be with him. He says, Rabbi, we know thou art a teacher come from God. No man can do these things except God be with him. <clears throat> and so all of these things that we're talking about, Jesus was sealed 
in a miraculous way, and it was evidence, it was a visible sign by the things he did, by the things that he, he accomplished that he went about doing. Now, that was, that was the, how he was sealed. Now, notice this. Now, the apostles were sealed by God as well. Now, how do you suspect then that they were sealed? Given what we know about Jesus, how were they sealed? Look at this. 2 Corinthians 1, verses 21 and 22. Paul says, Now, he that establisheth us with you in Christ and hath anointed us is God. God anointed the apostles? God anointed the apostles? How did he anoint them? Well, look at this. Who hath also sealed us and given us the earnest of the Spirit in our hearts. Did the, did the apostles have some way to prove that they were the apostles of God? You know what? It's just like Jesus did. The way Jesus was proven to be the Son of God, or proven that God is with him, was by miraculous, miraculous uh, gifts. 2 Corinthians 12, 12, Paul said, Truly the signs of an apostle were wrought among you in all patience, in signs and wonders and mighty deeds. Now wait, the signs of an apostle? What's the sign of an apostle? How could, you, how could you prove that you were an apostle? How could it be verified? Well, let's look at this. Someone comes along and says, Well, I'm an apostle. You know what I'm going to say? I'm going to say, Prove it. Let me see the seal of your approval. Let me see the seal of your apostleship. In 1 Corinthians 9 and verse 2, Paul said, If I be not an apostle unto others, yet doubtless I am to you for the seal of mine apostleship are ye in the Lord. <coughs> now, Paul tells, says to the Corinthians, The seal of my apostleship are ye in the Lord. How were the Corinthians his seal of an apostle? He said, some people doubt that I'm an apostle. But you shouldn't doubt that I'm an apostle because you are the seal of my apostleship. How could the Corinthians be a seal, a visible indication that Paul was an apostle? You may be saying, well, James, you just said that uh, all you know, Jesus was, was sealed or he was given a stamp of approval by the miracles that he did. And apostles were sealed by God. Obviously, they had the ability to perform miracles. But now you're saying that the Corinthians were the actual seal and not this miraculous gift? Well, not necessarily. Not totally. What could an apostle do? What could an apostle do that no one else could do? See, the apostle could pass on miraculous gifts. Only an apostle could do that. So if someone had miraculous gifts, if someone was doing things that no one else could do, right? someone else is out here healing the sick or they're speaking in tongues or they're giving an interpretation of tongues, they have a, a gift of prophecy or something like that, the, the only way they had that gift was if an apostle laid hands on them. All right? Look at 1 Corinthians 1 and verse 6. Paul said, even as the testimony of Christ was confirmed in you, so that ye come behind in no gift. How, how would they get these gifts to start with? Through the laying on of an apostle's hands. Now look at this. In Acts 8, Acts, Acts chapter 8, and let's look, let's start in about verse 12 here. <coughs> the folks in Samaria... They, they believed Philip's preaching. They believed Philip preaching the things concerning the kingdom of God and the name of Jesus Christ. They were baptized, both men and women. Then Simon himself believed also, and when he was baptized, he continued with Philip and wondered, beholding the miracles and signs that were done. Verse 14, Now when the apostles, which were at Jerusalem, heard that Samaria had received the word of God, they sent unto them Peter and John who when they were come down prayed for them that they might receive the Holy Ghost for as yet he was found upon none of them only they had, were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Then 
laid they their hands on them, and they received the Holy Ghost. And when Simon saw that through the laying on the apostles' hands the Holy Ghost was given, he offered them money, saying, Give me also this power that on whomsoever I lay hands, he may receive the Holy Ghost. Now, how was it then, let's get back to the Corinthians, how was it then that the Corinthians were the seal of Paul's apostleship? It must have been because the Corinthians got miraculous gifts at the hands of the apostle Paul. And Paul said, you of all people should not doubt that I'm an apostle because I am the one who laid hands on you and gave you miraculous gifts that you're obviously abusing and misusing and all the other things because I'm having a right to all the, all the trouble that you're in. Obviously, having these gifts of the Holy Spirit is not helping you because you're out here abusing the Lord's Supper. you got women preaching. See that? You're not laying by in store on the first day of the week as you as you ought to be doing. But he said, but you know I'm an apostle. Because all these gifts of prophecies and tongues that that you're uh, not using correctly, he said, you got them when I laid hands on you. Now, let me just stop right here and say this for a second, friends. These folks today that claim to be an apostle, if they claim to be an apostle, why don't they lay hands on someone and give them the gift of discerning of spirits? You know, no one wants discerning of spirits, Mark. No, no one says, well, i got the discerning of spirits. You know why? Because then you'd have to tell someone what's in their heart. You'd have to tell them what's going on. You just can't do that. It's easier to say, i got to get the tongues and go, that's easy. Just I just jib jab and I say, "Hey, I'm speaking in tongues." Tongues are easy to fake, see. But if if the the chief apostle in Danville, if he's really a, an apostle, why don't he pass on some of his miraculous gifts, so that so that everybody in Danville is not behind in any gift? You know what that tells me? That the sign of the apostles which was the ability to pass on miraculous gifts, is not evidence, not evident in uh, Lawrence Campbell. He's not an apostle of Danville, much less the world. You see what I'm talking about, friends? And apostles were sealed in such a way that it was evident who they were. It was easy to see who they were because they were sealed. That's why Paul says this in Romans 1 and verse 11. He says, I long to see you that I may impart unto you some spiritual gift to the end that you may be established. Well, why, why didn't they have these miraculous gifts when they were baptized, Paul? Because you only got these miraculous gifts when you had apostles lay hands on you. That's, that's the only way you got these gifts. So he says, but I'm sealed by the Spirit. Well, you're not sealed like they were in the first century. And if you claim to be an apostle, let's see your seal. Let's see your seal of approval. Let's see you impart some spiritual gift. That's what Paul did. That's what Paul did. So they could seal others. Apostles could seal others. Remember the, the, the definition of seal. <clears throat> it's something visible that could be seen. Evidence. Now look at this. How did Paul seal the Ephesians? This is the verse we started with, Ephesians 1 and verse 13. Ephesians 1 and verse 13. He says in, uh, in whom ye also trusted, after that ye had heard the word of truth and the gospel of your salvation, in whom also after ye believed ye were sealed with that spirit of promise. How were you sealed with that spirit of promise? Well, he says, notice, he says, you heard the word of truth. That is, you obeyed the gospel. You believed, and then you were sealed with the seal of promise. Now, someone says, well, see, they, they heard and they believed, and boy, they got the miraculous gifts, and jib, jab, jib, 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 jib. No, 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 wait a minute. Let's, let's back up and see what happened. 
See, Paul didn't have to tell them exactly everything that happened because they know what happened. They were there. You and I, we have to go back and find out what happened. He's talking to the Ephesians whom he says trusted in the truth, obeyed, the, believed the gospel, and then were sealed. So how, how did that take place? How did that happen? Well, let's go back to Acts chapter 19. This is where the Ephesians were sealed. All right, here's the, here's the visible sign, the visible sign that, <coughs> that, that Paul says they were sealed with. In Acts 19 and verse 2, he comes to the coast of Ephesus and he is finding some, some disciples there and he says, have you received the Holy Ghost since you believed? And they said, we have not so much as heard whether there be any Holy Ghost. And he said unto them, unto the what then were you baptized? And they said, unto John's baptism. Then said Paul, John verily baptized with the baptism of repentance, saying to the people that they should believe on him which should come after him. That is on Christ, on Christ Jesus. Now notice this in verse 5. And when they heard this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. And when Paul had laid his hands upon them, the Holy Ghost came on them, and they spake with tongues of prophesied. Now look at this. They heard. They believed and were baptized. And then an apostle comes along and lays hands on them and they speak with tongues and prophesy. The, 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 the way in which they received the Holy Spirit, the way in which they received this seal of the Holy Spirit was through the laying on the apostles' hands. It was after they have been obedient to the gospel. <clears throat> so, when Paul says to the Ephesians, you were sealed by the Holy Spirit, he's talking about they were sealed by the Holy Spirit when he laid hands on them. When he, when he gave them something that could only be given, number one, by an apostle, and it was a miraculous gift that was evidenced that now they are a child of God. So they, they were sealed by the miracles, in the sense of it was something visible, something that could be clearly seen. Now, someone today says, well, all right, James, you're building a pretty good case here. People today are sealed by the Spirit, therefore miraculous gifts are for today. Well, hang on a second. Hang on a second. We know the purpose of miracles. The purpose of miracles was to confirm the Word. Mark 16. Let's take a time and look at this. Mark 16, verse 17. These signs shall follow them that believe, and in my name shall they cast out devils. They shall speak with tongue, new tongues. <coughs> they shall take up uh, serpents, and if they drink any deadly thing, it will not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. So after the Lord had spoken unto them, he was received up into heaven and sat on the right hand of God, and they went forth and preached everywhere, the Lord working with them and confirming the word with signs following. So the, the words were confirmed with these signs, these miraculous gifts. Now someone says, well, James, but why aren't we sealed by the Holy Spirit today? These miraculous gifts. Well, number one, we don't have an apostle to lay hands on anybody. So, we can't be sealed with miraculous gifts like the Ephesians were because we don't have an apostle. So I said, well, but James, uh, you know, what about uh, 1 John 2 and verse 20? 1 John chapter 2 and verse 20. Well, what about this verse? It says, but ye have an unction from the Holy Ghost and ye know all things. And then if you come down to verse 27, look what it says. He says, But the anointing which ye have received of him abideth in you, and ye need not that any man teach you, but as the same anointing teacheth you all things, and is truth, and is no lie, and hath given as it is, and, and even as it hath been taught you, Ye shall abide in him. Now look at these phrases that John is using in reference to the anointing and the, this unction. 
remember we're talking about miracles. I submit to you that 1 John 2, verse 20, verse 27, is talking about in a miraculous context. Look at this. John says, remember he said, the anointing which you have received of him abideth in you, and ye need not that any man teach you as the same anointing teacheth you all things. Teacheth you of all things. And verse 20, he said again, go back and read it again. He said, uh, ye have an unction from the Holy Ghost and ye know all things. Friends, that's exactly what the Holy Spirit was supposed to do. John 14, 26, but the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance. So when John was writing, he's writing to people who obviously had been given a miraculous gift by the laying on of the apostles' hands. And he's saying, therefore, you have this unction, you have this anointing, you have this seal, if you will, <clears throat> which guides you into all truth. You know all things. John 16, verse 30, How be it when he, the Spirit of truth, has come, he will guide you into all truth. He will not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he, that shall he speak, and he will show you things to come. The very thing that Jesus said the Holy Spirit would do, John tells the folks that he's writing to, you have an unction, you have an anointing of the Holy Spirit, and guess what? He's teaching you all things and guiding you all truth. You don't need anybody to teach you these things because you actually have a miraculous gift that can bring these things to you. But mind you that John is still writing to them to encourage them. You know why? Because just because they had the miraculous gifts of the Holy Spirit didn't mean that they were uh, infallible, didn't mean that they didn't have problems or couldn't face problems. We talked about a little bit ago. We talked about that a little bit ago in, uh, when we talked about the Corinthians. The Corinthians had miraculous gifts, and boy, they were full of trouble. So this anointing, this, this unction of the Holy Spirit, this, this pouring out was, yes, it was a visible seal that, that could verify that what I'm saying is the truth. But today, are we sealed by the Holy Spirit today? We have the same miraculous outpouring and anointing then, are we sealed in the same way? Well, remember remember what sealed means. It, it's a, it means to confirm. It, it's a testimony. It's a, it's a signet or a, a statement, something visible that, that says you are who you say you are, you are you're with who you say you're with, or some kind of confirmation. In John 3 and verse 33, Jesus says, He that hath received his testimony hath set to his seal that God is true. Now, now think about this, friends. Believing a testimony is a seal. You with me? Believing something is a seal. It's an affirmation. So to seal something is to affirm that a thing is true. It's to verify, yeah, it's true. You go down to the courthouse and you give a deposition. You're testifying to a certain fact, something that happened. You're giving a deposition. You are setting your seal that it's true. Sometimes you fill out some paperwork and it says, I affirm that everything I put on here is true. You fill out your income taxes and what does it say? Everything on here is true. What are you doing? You're setting your seal to it. You're verifying, you're confirming this is true. Well, friends, those individuals who believe and accept what Jesus taught, they were putting their stamp of approval on something. They were putting their verification that it was true. Look at this. In, John, in Luke 7, verse 29, in Luke 7, verse 29, these folks were putting a stamp of approval or a seal on what was being taught because they obeyed it. Look at this. All the people that heard him, this is Luke 7, 29, and all the people that heard him and the publicans justified God being baptized with the baptism of John. 
So what were they doing? They were saying, this must be from God because I'm going to obey it. It's from God. I believe it's from God so much that I'm going to do it. But the Pharisees and the lawyers rejected the counsel of God against themselves being not baptized of him. So what were they saying? I don't believe that's from God. I don't believe that's from God. I'm not going to do it. Now remember Jesus used this against them when he's talking to them. He said, the baptism of John, from whence was it, from heaven or from men? And they said, wait, wait a minute now. If we say it's from men, the people will get mad because they think John's the prophet. If we say it's from, from heaven, he'll say, why didn't you obey it? So here they are saying, well, I don't believe it. I'm not going to obey it. They had to say it wasn't from God because they didn't obey it. So what was, what was their seal or what was their testimony? Their testimony is John's lying because I'm not going to do it. But the publicans, they believed it. They said, oh, he's telling the truth. I'm going to believe it. So when you believe something, friends, you're sealing something. You're verifying something. So a testimony can be a seal. Now watch this. Stay with me. Now the Holy Spirit does seal today when he bears witness that someone did something that God said do. See, that testimony works both ways. Look at this. In, Luke, in Romans 8, verse 16 and 17, the Spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. Now how does the Holy Spirit bear witness with our spirit? Well, our spirit testifies that we are God's children. It testifies we are God's children because we have done what the Lord said do. We have believed the gospel. We have believed that Jesus is the Son of God. We have repented of our sins, Luke 13, 3. We have confessed that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. We have been baptized for the remission of sins, Acts 2, 16, Acts 22, 16, and Acts 2, 38. We've done those things, and therefore the Holy Spirit confirms it by saying, you know what, I'm going to verify that, that they've done that. Now, how does the Holy Spirit do that? Does the Holy Spirit come down and say, Lord, yeah, James did that. No, not like that. But he does testify. He sets it to our seal by verifying that we have done what he said you must do. See, the Holy Spirit testifies through the word. In Hebrews 10 verse 15, therefore the Holy Ghost also is a witness to us. For after that he had said before, this is the covenant that I will make with them. After those days, saith the Lord, I will put my laws in their hearts and I will put in, I, in their minds will I, write, write, uh, will I write them. How does the Holy Spirit testify? He testifies by what he says. So here's the thing. The Spirit has testified in this word right here. And if we do what this word says, guess what? Our spirit will Testify with the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit will say, you know what? James did exactly what I said do. God, the Holy Spirit inspired writers to tell us what to do. So if we do what the Spirit inspired book says do, the Holy Spirit saying, yep, they did it. And you can go to it and say it and, and prove it. That's why, friends, we say we want a verse. We want the Holy Spirit to be a witness about what you're saying. Now that's what I'm doing. I'm saying, look, the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit will bear witness that what I'm saying to you is true about the one church, about salvation, because I can find in this book, friends. But when someone tells me, well, I had a dream, I had a vision, uh, uh, you know, I had a warm feeling or whatever, God spoke to me, this, that, and other, that, that's, not, that's, not what, that's not what the Bible's saying. That's not what the Holy Spirit is testifying. So the Spirit will bear witness and thus seal if you've done what the Bible says do. See, so if you do what the Spirit says, He will testify, He will set it to your seal that you're a child of God. And you then will be sealed by the Spirit. You will be authenticated by the Spirit based upon what He said you must do. Now, is it miraculous? No. Not miraculous? No. But is it visible? Yes, it is. 
Certainly is. Yes, you can't change it. You're on yes. a word from the Lord. Yes. Turn your phone down a little bit. Turn your phone down a little bit. All right, you there? Hello? You're on there. Uh, just calling to say I think you're doing a great job tonight. Well, I appreciate it. Where, where are you calling from? Reedsville. Reedsville. Okay. Yeah. Have Have we met before? Uh, no, sir. All right. Well, like to get to meet you sometime. Uh, that's fine. But I just think you're doing a great job. That's all. Okay. Well, I, I appreciate that. But um, you know, like to get to know you. Glad you're watching, though. Come visit us on the boulevard. All right. Thanks. All righty. Thank you. All right. All right. Well, I'm glad to know that it's making making sense. Sometimes it gets a little boggy here. So notice this. So the Holy Spirit seals. Now you say, well, James, if the Holy Spirit doesn't seal miraculously, what is visible about it? That's a good question. That's a good question. What is visible about you obeying the gospel? You know what, friends? It's a changed life. It's a changed life. Uh, Galatians 5 and verse 22. Look at this. Galatians 5 and verse 22. The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, good, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. These are things that are going to be <clears throat> incorporated in your life. Ephesians uh, 5. Beginning at verse 1, notice this. Here's some things that are going to be in your life, if you will. Evidences, if you will. Test, uh, 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 seals or testaments to who you are. But ye therefore followers of God as dear children, walk in love as Christ also has loved us and hath given himself for us an, an, an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet-smelling savor. But fornication... And all uncleanness or covetousness, let it not be once named among you as becometh saints, neither filthiness nor foolish jesting, which is not convenient, but rather giving of thanks. For this ye know that no whoremonger, no unclean person nor covetous man who is an idolater hath any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and of God. Now, friends, this is why I'm saying this. Someone says, well, I've been, I've been sealed by the Spirit. And they are here fornicating. They're out here uh, uh, today, you know, they're running around their wife, they're gambling, everybody's talking about the big lottery. Everybody went, oh, the, the big lottery. Christian doesn't do that. Doesn't tell dirty jokes, right? Doesn't shack up and run around and get drunk. He's out here, you know, carousing around. I remember talking to a man, he said, yeah, he said, uh, he said, uh, um, you know, I know the Lord's blessing me and everything. I, I'm, I'm doing better, so I know the Lord's blessing me, but me and my wife's having trouble, so I'm just living over here with my girlfriend. Whoa, 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 whoa stop. You, you know the Lord's blessing you and you're shacking up over here? Oh, no. Oh, no. But see, friends, a changed life is something that is visible. As a matter of fact, <clears throat> it ought to be, it ought to be that people who know you after you obey the gospel, they know you change. Look at this. Whereby they think it's strange that you run not with them to the same excess of right, speaking evil of you. There's the visible sign, the visible change. You're on the word from the Lord. My pastor, Freedom Baptist Church, do not prove y'all be a liar. And y'all ain't preaching the truth. You need to go down there and get saved. Let him save you. Who is that? Who's, who's your preacher? Freedom Baptist Church. He'll save you people. Freedom Baptist Church? Who's, who's, who's the preacher? Who's the preacher? All right, drive by caller. Calls in, fires a shot, hangs up, runs. All right, the Freedom Baptist, so so the Freedom Baptist, did he say Freedom Baptist Church? I, I don't think it's the one in, in uh, Henry County. I think there's another one down here somewhere. Uh so, but, you know, he won't tell you who it is. You know, I seem to remember that a man who needed to be saved named Cornelius. Uh, Mark, a man who needed to be saved in the Bible, name was Cornelius. He was told the name of the man that could save him, that could give him information. Right? He said, go send for one man named Simon. Well, this man calls us, y'all need to be saved. Well, who, who, who do I go to? I'm, I'm not going to tell you that. All right, well. 
must not love the truth. Well, you know what, friends? If we're teaching something wrong, let the Bible, let let the Holy Spirit testify against us. Let the Holy Spirit testify against us. That, that's how simple it is. See, so yeah, the 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 visible seal <clears throat> of the Holy Spirit, it's not miraculous, but it is visible. It is visible. First Peter three. 1 Peter 3 and verse 2, notice what Peter said. He said, likewise, uh, 3, uh, 1 Peter 3, 2, he says, while, you behold, while they behold your chaste conversation coupled with fear. When people see you, they ought to see a difference. Now, if the Holy Spirit is testifying that you're a child of God, if he's setting it to your seal, he'll agree with what you're doing. Now, friend that just called in, if you're in the Baptist church, Find the Holy Spirit testifying that you're in the right church. Can you find the Holy Spirit say anything about the Baptist church? If the if your preacher is telling the truth, if your preacher is telling us the truth, then why don't he show it in the in the Bible? Why doesn't the Holy Spirit agree with him? See how easy it is, friends. Friends, we're we're out of time. We're out of time. Uh, might say I can go a little bit long, but I'm going to cut it off here. Uh, so if we can help you in any way, we want to do the very thing. You can reach me at the word from the Lord at gmail.com, 276-340-2653. Thank you for watching. Appreciate your comments and the calls. <clears throat> we may go check out the Freedom Baptist Church, see if he can tell us something that we need to know. Till next time, friends, always ask what does the Bible say, and you get a word from the Lord. Have a good night.